In today's video, I'm going to show you five games you can buy on the Nintendo Switch right now that have the look and feel of an old school NES game. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Biolab Wars was released on November 15th, 2019 from Forever Entertainment, and you can currently buy it on the Nintendo Switch eShop for $1.99. Biolab Wars is a single-player 2D shooter platformer inspired by games from the 8-bit era and movies from the 80s. And you can feel and see both of these inspirations, from the awesome 8-bit pixel art and aesthetics that remind you of NES games, to the 80s-inspired music, action, and explosions. In Biolab Wars, you play as a mercenary team of three being Finn, Becca, and Teddy as they set out to defeat an alien invasion and they are all playable characters. Unfortunately, other than aesthetic purposes, there's no gameplay differences that I could tell between the three characters. There are seven stages, each with three levels and ending with a boss fight, and your goal is to simply platform and shoot your way to the end of each stage and defeat the boss. There are four different weapon power-ups to find, and of course you have your trusty grenades. The controls are simple two-button controls with a jump button and a shoot button. Each stage feels totally different with different enemies, bosses, music, theme, art, and sometimes even mechanics. For example, in stage two, you're racing through the stage on your motorcycle trying to defeat enemies and dodge bullet fire the entire time. Biolab Wars features that old school NES difficulty with limited lives and a time limit in each level. Thankfully, each level within each stage serves as a checkpoint, and when you get game over, you can start on any stage that you've seen so far so you don't have to start from the absolute beginning. Biolab Wars is an awesome 8-bit love letter to the NES era as well as 80s action movies. And you know what? For $1.99, you really can't go wrong with Biolab Wars, so be sure and check it out. Pixel Devil and the Broken Cartridge was released on February 27th, 2019 from Black Sun Games Publishing, and you can currently get it on the eShop for $9.99. Pixel Devil is an NES 8-bit inspired 2D action platformer with shooting where you take on the role of a boy that gets trapped inside of an 8-bit video game world where a villain has abducted a young woman and you must save her and escape. Pixel Devil consists of five levels, each of which ending in a boss fight. Each level contains these little PD collectibles scattered throughout, and every 50 of them you find, you gain a new health bar, and you can also find standalone health upgrades as well. Throughout the five stages, you will be platforming, killing enemies, and dodging traps, and the controls are NES simple with a jump button and a button to use your currently equipped item, of which there are four of them total to find. You can enter any level you want, but some levels require you to find certain items to progress further. Pixel Devil absolutely nailed the NES 8-bit pixel art, aesthetic, music, and design, and it even has some of that old-school difficulty, but there are checkpoints in Infinite Lives, so it isn't too hard to make it through. There are references throughout to older games. For example, you find a plunger gun that is straight out of Quackshot starring Donald Duck, and you find a bouncing cane that is straight out of DuckTales. I love these types of references and inspirations, and it makes it feel even more retro. There are some frustrations with Pixel Devil involving some very cheap and frustrating deaths and knockback situations, and some some low enemies are really hard to shoot, but outside of that, I found the game to be fun, and it definitely reminded me of an NES game. It only takes about 30 minutes to an hour to complete, so I feel like $9.99 is a little bit too pricey for this game, but if you can find Pixel Devil on sale on the Switch eShop, then it's worth checking out because it's an awesome little NES-inspired retro game. Owl's Awakening was released on September 27th, 2018 from Elden Pixel and you can currently get it on the eShop for $9.99. Alwa's Awakening is a 2D adventure game where you use your magic staff to explore a large world full of puzzles, enemies to fight, and bosses to defeat. Alwa's Awakening absolutely nails the 8-bit NES aesthetic with its incredible pixel art and catchy 8-bit soundtrack consisting of over 25 songs. Throughout the adventure, you will find dungeons full of puzzles to explore, magic upgrades for your staff to find, which in turn enable you to explore even more of the world and NPCs to interact with. It has sort of a Metroidvania feel to it combined with a smidge of Zelda, and the game is quite fun to play. 
It's not super difficult, at least not in the beginning, but there are some bits of challenge here and there. The magic you obtain is very interesting. The green magic allows you to place green blocks you can use to traverse higher platforms. The blue magic creates a blue bubble that floats up so that you can use it to reach higher areas. And the yellow magic shoots a bolt that damages enemies and opens certain doors. The green and blue magic can be upgraded to make them even more effective, and there are various other items to find throughout the game. If you're looking for a more open 8-bit NES-inspired adventure with exploration and puzzle as opposed to something more level based, then Owl's Awakening is a great game to check out on the Switch to scratch that old school retro itch, and a sequel to the game just recently released in September 2020 called Owl's Legacy. I highly recommend Owl's Awakening not only for people that love retro inspired NES 8-bit style games, but also people that love indie games as well, so check it out. Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Mayan was released on September 12, 2019 from Collector Vision Games, and you can currently get it on the eShop for $9.99. Sydney Hunter is a 2D action-adventure platformer inspired by the 8-bit glory days of gaming. You take on the role of Sydney Hunter as he is trapped in a Maya pyramid and tries to collect the seven pieces of the Hab calendar and escape the pyramid, so it features a story very much inspired by Maya culture and history. The pyramid itself serves as a hub area where you access all the levels if you have the right number of skulls to unlock them, and there are also NPCs and shops scattered around the pyramid. There are 11 different temples and two courtyards within the pyramid to explore, and each of these levels ends in a boss fight and contains weapons and relics to find to help you in your adventure. You will run, jump, avoid traps, gather keys, fight enemies with your trusty whip, collect treasure, and explore to find secrets. Each level has some branching paths to keep them from feeling linear, and Sydney Hunter also features two different endings. The graphics, feel of the game, and music are all love letters to the NES era, but Sydney Hunter also features a bit of modern flair thrown in for good measure. I am really enjoying this game. It is a blast exploring the temples and collecting treasure and fighting enemies, and so far the level design and difficulty curve is top notch, and the boss fights are a blast. Sydney Hunter is a fantastic game that really captures that 8-bit NES look and feel, and I highly recommend checking it out on the Nintendo Switch. Angry Video Game Nerd 1 and 2 Deluxe features both games in all content and was released on Switch on October 30th, 2020 from Screenwave Media, and you can currently get it on the eShop for $14.99, and let me tell you, it's worth every freaking penny. Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures and Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures 2 Assimilation are both 2D action platformers that look, play, feel, and sound like an old school NES game. Both games feature similar stories. In the first game, the nerd is sucked into game land and he must escape. And in the second game, the entire world has been turned into a video game and the nerd must save the day. Both games feature characters from AVGN and Cinemasker, as well as that classic AVGN humor, as you will see ton of cursing, toilet humor, and hilarious nerd one-liners as you play through both adventures. Both games are absolutely packed full of video game and movie references from the levels to the enemies and bosses as well as the dialogue. Retro gamers, movie lovers, or simply fans of AVGN are all in for a treat with both games. The pixel art graphical style in both games are top-notch with a ton of variety in levels, assets, backgrounds, and enemies with varied color palettes to keep things fresh throughout and both games really capture that classic NES retro graphical style but with some modern flair thrown in. The music and sound design in both AVGN games is absolutely incredible with a ton of variety from level to level and they really capture that retro NES sound. The first game features nine levels you can play in almost any order and the second game features a world map like Super Mario Bros. 3 and contains 16 levels and six boss fights. Then when you beat both games you unlock the final chapter with another three really difficult levels and a really difficult final boss. That combined with the collectibles upgrades and multiple difficulties and you have a decent amount of content for your money. At its core, the gameplay in both games involves you running through each level as the nerd, platforming, avoiding traps, finding secrets, and killing enemies and bosses with your gun, which by the way is an NES zapper, and various sub-weapons, but beyond that, each game has its differences as well. In both games, there are four nerd letters to find in each level, and the first game features three unlockable characters, and the second game features several unlockable upgrades for the nerd. The level design in both games is absolutely top-notch and blew me away at every turn. There's a ton of gameplay variety throughout the levels in both traps, enemies, bosses, and mechanics to the point where every level felt unique and they were all a blast to play.
Both games are pretty damn hard as well, but the good thing is that with multiple difficulty settings, you can make them as easy or as hard as you want to. I had an absolute blast playing through both games, and I could see myself coming back to replay them from time to time, just like some of the timeless classics I love from the NES era. Both Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures 1 and 2 are packed full of gaming and movie references, that classic AVGN humor that you know and love, retro inspired gameplay and graphics, and for the price of $15, you just really can't go wrong with this package. It's such a great deal for two fantastic games, and I cannot recommend it enough. Check them out. So there you have it folks, those are five games you can get on the Switch eShop right now that look and feel like an old school 8-bit NES retro game. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure and hit that like button. Let me know in the comments down below if you've played any of the games that I mentioned in today's video and what you think about them. Also, let me know in the comments down below if there are any other NES inspired retro 8-bit games on the Switch eShop that I should cover in a future video. As always folks, if you're new here, consider subscribing so that you can join the Retro Wolf family. And as always, stay safe out there, keep playing games and having a good time, and I will see you all in the next video. Later.